Mercury is a heavy metal known to be toxic to the nervous system, and some have suggested that mercury could increase the risk of, cause, or exacerbate multiple sclerosis. And some authors, such as Dr. Terry Walls and Judy Graham, have suggested removal of dental amalgams because they contain mercury. In this video, I will review the putative connection between mercury and multiple sclerosis and give my personal opinion. Let's have some fun. I'm Brandon Bieber, and I make videos about MS every Wednesday, so please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. A little bit about the sources of mercury. Now, this presentation will focus on dental amalgams. However, other things expose us to mercury as well. For instance, some vaccines contain thiomerosal, which contains some mercury, although this has been largely eliminated from vaccines given to young children under six. Some cosmetics, such as mascara, have small amounts of mercury. For fluorescent lamps and thermometers often use mercury. And electrical switches often have mercury, along with certain medications, such as diuretics. Now, mercury is known to be toxic to the nervous system. It does many things simultaneously. For instance, it inhibits the enzyme catechol-O-methyltransferase, which is involved in degrading catecholamine neurotransmitters. It also inhibits enzymes that are dependent on selenium, such as thyroidoxin, reductase, which is involved in replenishing vitamin C, and also glutathione, which is another antioxidant. Mercury inhibits myelin formation, and methylmercury, which is one of the metabolites of mercury, is actually associated with antibodies against myelin basic protein. This antibody is seen in people with multiple sclerosis. There are many other things and many other metabolites of mercury, and I won't go into the details there. Now, what about dental amalgams? The reason dental amalgams are used is because mercury has the property of being soft and yet when combined with other metals, it it's, keeps its shape and it's stable for years. And so it's able to fill a dental defect. And it also has some antimicrobial properties. It's also relatively inexpensive. So that's sort of the reason it's used in dental work. However, it's been shown that even though the mercury is supposed to be tightly bound to the other metals, small amounts of mercury vapor is released from dental amalgams and absorbed into the body. And also the number of fillings you have is linked to the urine mercury concentration. And certain activities such as nicotine chewing gum may raise mercury levels and grinding your teeth or bruxism may also raise mercury levels. And sometimes there's a problem with the filling and it may leak a little bit and actually expose you to a little bit more mercury. But is it enough to actually cause harm? Well, there is some possible association between mercury and MS based on the following evidence. One is that mercury poisoning can cause symptoms similar to MS. For instance, it could cause imbalance, numbness, constriction of the visual fields, speech and hearing problems, nystagmus or bouncing eye movements, tremor of the limbs, and cognitive changes, very similar to symptoms seen in MS. Also, people with MS, according to one study, who have dental amalgams, have lower CD8 positive T cells, suppressor T cells, involved in regulating the immune system and more exacerbations. There's some anecdotal reports of people with MS getting their amalgam fillings removed and having improvement of their symptoms. There was one study where people with autoimmune diseases, including MS, had their amalgams removed and 71% reported a subjective improvement of symptoms. Now this was many uh, autoimmune diseases, not just MS. There was a Swedish study where three out of 493 dental assistants, about 0.6%, had MS compared to the nationwide incidence of less than 0.2%. This was not statistically significant, but an interesting finding. A study in Iran found that people with MS had higher serum levels of mercury compared to controls, a level of 9.6 versus 5.7 in controls, and this was statistically significant. But what about the counter evidence? Well, one thing is that worldwide use of mercury has actually decreased by about 50% since 1980, but the rate of MS seems to be significantly increasing. Some countries have actually banned amalgams. For instance, the European Union banned amalgams for children under age 15 and pregnant and breastfeeding women unless, quote, deemed strictly necessary. And even prior to this ban, which is quite recent, the use of amalgams has been dramatically declining. 
For people with occupational exposure to mercury who actually have known mercury poisoning, they tend to have fairly high levels of mercury, around 50 micrograms per liter in the urine or more. Whereas people with dental amalgams tend to have very low levels, like less than two micrograms per liter. So the typical person tends not to even be close to what is actually seen in real mercury poisoning. Also, someone did an autopsy study on people with MS, and they actually seem to have less lipid-soluble mercury in their brains on autopsy compared to controls. An English study found that even though people with MS have slightly more cavities than people without MS, they don't have more amalgam fillings on average, and they don't have higher mercury levels than controls at all. And this was a very good population-based study. And also, mercury poisoning, although superficially similar to MS, is really a very different disease. For instance, this is a 47-year-old man who had mercury poisoning from uh, consuming large amounts of contaminated fish over a long period of time. And you can see typical findings of mercury findings, which are atrophy of certain areas of the brain. You can see the dilated calcarin fissures from atrophy of the occipital lobes, and this kind of correlates with constriction of the visual field seen clinically. Just to compare, this is a typical MRI in someone with MS. Really, this is not seen in people with known clinical mercury poisoning. There are a lot of differences between MS and mercury poisoning. MS is a relapsing disease often, whereas mercury poisoning is usually slow and insidious. As I said, MS often is associated or almost always associated with white matter lesions on MRI. Also, although the symptoms may be superficially similar to a layperson, they're actually quite different. For instance, mercury poisoning causes constriction of the visual fields, whereas MS is associated with optic neuritis, a totally different disease. Also, mercury poisoning tends to cause very symmetrical symptoms, whereas in MS it's usually very asymmetrical, such as weakness or numbness or internuclear ophthalmoplegia on one side of the body. Also, the numbness in mercury poisoning is usually due to peripheral neuropathy, peripheral nervous system disease, whereas multiple sclerosis is, of course, a central nervous system disease with different clinical findings. U.S. dentists actually have a slightly lower risk of MS, 556 to 1, compared to the general population, 350 to 1. And their risk of MS is not correlated with mercury exposure or their urine mercury concentration. And if you look at different countries throughout the world, our dental health is improving and our need for fillings is significantly reducing. And if you look at some of the countries in the world with some of the highest rates of MS, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, their use of mercury in dentistry is dramatically declining, even long before the European Union ban, as I mentioned. And even in New York City, we can see that urine mercury levels are declining, but we know that the rate of MS is increasing, not declining. This is a statement from the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, and I think it's very accurate. There is no scientific evidence to connect the development of MS with mercury-based dental fillings. Poisoning with heavy metals such as mercury, lead, or manganese can damage the nervous system and produce symptoms such as tremor and weakness, similar to those seen in MS. However, the underlying mechanism of the nerve damage is completely different from MS. Now, you may say, I already have a neurological disease. Mercury is known to be neurotoxic even if small levels of mercury exposure may not cause any problems, why take the chances? They're unattractive anyways. I want to replace them with white fillings. This is certainly a defensible position, but there are some risks to have your amalgams removed, so caveat emptor. So if do you have dental amalgam fillings, please post in the comments below, and did you have them removed, or would you consider having them removed?